Hey everybody, thanks for joining me for another video. Today, the topic is just um, psychic abilities and your psychic journey in general. I'm gonna keep it pretty open. Um, so it could be a message about things that you can do to increase your psychic abilities. It could be a psychic channeled message for you or anything related to the topic. I do have two piles for you to choose from. Pile one has this purple card. They're very similar, but they're slightly different because I want you to use your intuition. We have spiritual awareness with this shade of purple. And then pile two, we have psychic abilities with this slightly different shade of purple. And I really want you to take a moment to make your selection and go with the one that has the strongest pull and actually feel it out. So I'll let you do that now. All right, pile one, y'all chose the spiritual awareness card. So let's take a look at all of the cards and then we'll get into it. Yeah, today I'm using a variety of decks. I'm using the Everyday Witch Tarot, the Witch's Oracle, Everyday Witch Oracle, and the Gendron Tarot. And then these um, color cards were from a crystal banner deck. I don't remember the name off the top of my head, but I'll just put it down below. And I'm also using the Chaotic Alchemy Oracle. So first we have Spiral with Attraction. We have Fire Magic. We have Friendship. We have Poverty Mindset. We have culture. I'm going to stop there and then I'll get into the rest because I'm already like picking up some intuitive messages. So they're going to be a little fragmented or separate because these feel related and then these feel like a separate message. The first thing with the spiral attraction and fire magic is um, in order to improve or enhance your spiritual or psychic abilities um, it's really important for you to tap into your creative spark and that sacral energy and your um, inner fire your divine fire as well as utilizing external tools to then um, bring the internal into the external so if you're doing manifestation it might be beneficial for you to pair that manifestation along with candle magic um, gazing into fire might also um, spark your mental processes so when it comes to um, psychic abilities like scrying or whatever the case is some people are water oriented and they get more from staring into water some people prefer staring into crystals i'm getting that flames and fire um, really spark your imaginative faculties your creative um, thinking and it allows you to um, get to things quicker it speeds up your processing and your psychic abilities and it adds intensity heat and speed to um if you're doing workings to whatever workings you're doing but yeah so we have fire gazing sacral chakra um spirals also allowing yourself to um from time to time circle back around to previous passions or interests your life does not take on like a straight traje trajectory and you very well could be the type of person um that no is able to notice very clear cycles and patterns in your life so um for you it would be really beneficial to kind of go throughout your life in a, in a review and instead of doing a timeline maybe just noting um, major chapters or cycles or when you feel like you've circled back around to a very familiar point in life and kind of note like when that was like some people um, you can use astrology to do that some people feel like every four years there's a major life change every seven years or whatever your sense of timing is or if you want to look at things the past year in terms of every 28 days wh what were you doing you can use whatever um form of time and cycle you want but it would be really good for you to start training your mind to think in a cyclical fashion and in a seasonal fashion so that is one way you can kind of like program yourself to better recognize energies is by operating on um, a seasonal or cyclical 
way of thinking and being and living. Um, okay, so here we have friendship, poverty mindset, and culture. To me, this speaks on comparison and, and letting that go. Um, if you have friends that are, you bond over mutual interests, but you're comparing how far you are in life to how far they are in life, whether it's job-wise, family-wise, um, you know, achievements, possessions, accolades, or whatever. Um, it seems unrelated, but it's kind of like that energy of comparison and feeling down about certain aspects is like bleeding over into your spiritual life. And it's just creating a pool of lack that is now impacting um, your ability to open up. It's like a constricting type of energy. Um, so when you observe people who have things that you want for yourself or that are, is causing you to compare, instead of focusing on the distance of those things in your life, focus on like the proximity. Like I love when my friends are doing well and you know, they're entering new chapters of life, you know, getting married, having babies or whatever the case is, because I'm like, wow, before I didn't know anyone who was living those things, but now it's getting closer and closer into my reality. So I'm, I'm living vicariously through them and going at it with the spirit of appreciation and gratitude and just realizing, um, that those things are closer and we also have to realize that we have a different set of beliefs and backgrounds and practices and things that will be beneficial to us and so comparison um it really just is never helpful i can't really think of too many situations where comparison is beneficial especially in terms of like when we start thinking about subtle thought processes and subtle energies um yeah just you want to focus on expansive energies and gratitude so um, definitely start um, a gratitude practice so that you can look at all of the abundance in your life and as it pertains to your spiritual journey i'm um, just being grateful for all of the abilities that you currently have and it's nice to think of like things that you want to develop and work on but that energy of gratitude for how far you've come will help you get further. So if you feel like, oh, you're starting to dream at night again, just being grateful. Like you might not have lucid dreams or crazy dreams every night, but being, but looking back and cherishing the dreams that you have had or looking back at all the synchronistic moments that you've encountered and being like, yo, like that was like so fun and just kind of like basking in that energy a little bit more. Um, so let's move on to your tarot cards and the Gendron. I don't even remember. I shuffled these so long ago and prepared the pile so long ago. So I don't even know why this one is already faced up. But we have the, the I don't know how to say this word if I'm being honest. Is it magus, magus? You get what I'm saying. The magician, right? You have everything that you need already to be your most actualized version of self. And so it's not about seeing gifts and abilities that other people have and then being like, oh, I want that, I want that, I want that. It's more about coming back to self and then asking yourself the question, what is it that's within me that would like to be expressed or that is benefiting or being sharpened from these interactions with people of different cultures, right? And sometimes, okay, this is, I guess it's related, but what just came to my mind I was listening to an audiobook um, from Lynn Andrews, and it's a part of her Medicine Woman series. It's Jaguar Woman, but in one chapter, they were explaining how medicine women, like, if there's a lesson that their apprentice needs to know, and they they know a teacher that's better suited to teach that particular lesson because it comes from a different culture or background or whatever the case is, they will, like, send their apprentice to another teacher, to another shaman or another medicine woman to pick up those particular skills. Um, so also be willing to deviate from your own like um path and um yeah I don't know it, it kind of seems a little contradictory but this might just be to a different group uh, or subset of people in this reading but like um if you feel like you need to learn from someone outside of your normal tradition or pair another teaching with 
the line of work that you already practice. Um, it might be time for you to um, study underneath a new teacher or someone who can offer a different variety of skill sets. And like ultimately, it is important to realize that when we're talking about spirit, it's really the same teachings, just like masked in different languages. And so it might just be a matter of like fine tuning the language or the symbols or programs that make sense for you. But again, in order to like accurately know that you have to know yourself and you have to really study like what um, languages work for you. Do you understand the language of flowers and the symbolism of plants? Do you Are you a moon person and an astrology person and that type of language makes sense to you? Does animal language make, make more sense to you? Do you prefer um, more of like a traditional ceremonial magic elemental perspective and point of view? Do you just channel straight from source? So these are things that you um, can like play around with and fine tune. But um, that was a message that is coming up. But ultimately, like the way to know what's next is to know yourself really well. Know thyself and master thyself because you will always be your roadmap. So that comes first and then branching out and, and figuring out what other people have to offer um, is informed by you knowing yourself first. I hope that made sense and kind of like clarified any confusion. So next we have the moon. To me, this is um, the recognition that like the nature of some things, you just won't ever be able to firmly put your finger on it. The moon card is one of those cards where it's like, internally, I know what it means, but I can never quite verbalize it um, and put it into clean words exactly. But basically the moon card to me is just saying that at a certain point on your journey with um, your psychic abilities and energy work, it's no longer going to be easy or convenient for you to put things in words. It's no longer going to be easy for you to just pick up a book and find the information right there. And you still might, but it's more about following that little um, tingle or those breadcrumbs or those whispers to, to guide you and direct you to the next things. It's more about the process that you're using to gain information more than it is about the information or the words themselves. So the moon is encouraging you to um, tune into your more subtle perceptive senses and pay attention to that feeling that you can't quite put your finger on, but that you know it's calling you. Because that's what's going to take you to a higher level or a deeper level, you know. We have Princess of Swords and then we have Princess of Cups. So yeah, um, balancing out how much you use your logic and mental faculties with how much you use your intuitive and emotional abilities um, and making sure that both of, things are balance, both of those things are balanced and the ability to know what is required in what situation. So it's important for us to have all of these um, skills and tools. But again, like you don't want to completely throw out logic and then only move into the realm of emotions and intuition and you don't want to completely throw that out at the um, expense of logic so it's really all also about fine-tuning your sense of like time and um, knowing your tools and knowing what a situation best calls for so but by spending time in both of these areas um, that's going to help you recognize like which faculty is better suited for what types of situations so those are your messages for today. Thank you for tuning in. Um, I hope you found something in this uh, fruitful for you. And I really just enjoyed spending time with you here today. So thank you for tuning in and I'll see y'all on the next reading. Bye. Hey, pile two. So y'all chose psychic abilities. I'm gonna lay the cards out and find a flow and we're gonna go with that. So first we have card number 40, Owl Wisdom Keeper. Um, I'm being drawn to the key. Um, obviously there's owl symbolism, but just like um, keys of information or distinct moments where you come across something that you know is gonna help you in this next chapter. There could be like one very specific um, key of information that will be um, pivotal for your psychic abilities and your growth and your spiritual journey. So pay attention to like one obvious standout thing that like clicks everything else into place. And it could be a, something big or it could be something subtle. We'll kind of like figure that out. Um, but if you're one to call on animal energies or allies, you can definitely call in the owl spirit to help guide you. 
into um, clarifying what that specific key is. Next, we have um, affirmation for healing the heart. So it could be related to your heart or it could just be related to affirmations in general. But I definitely think the heart, I, I, this, I think the heart is something that everyone should work on. There are some people who feel like, you know, love is at my primary area of focus right now. So I kind of like don't do too much heart chakra work. But I do need people to know that heart chakra work is always relevant in my opinion because the heart is the center or central chakra that connects the upper chakras to the lower ones. And so if your bridge is faulty, you're going to have either you're going to be kind of like stuck up at the top and in the higher realms and not necessarily able to like ground the information and at what at that point it's like what's the point of having access to knowledge and information if you can't apply it or you'll kind of be stuck on the lower half and kind of like feeling like you're stuck or have plateaued in life because you aren't drawing down new inspiration new information and new wisdom so the heart um i think focusing on heart opening and heart um, work or closing if you need to balance that out um, is going to be really pivotal for you um, and then I'm going to circle back around to the affirmation because that that one is really interesting and I want to see kind of like the rest of the cards but I definitely think that that's going to be like relevant and maybe I actually got it it's relevant for helping your yourself accept that heart chakra work and the heart work is important if you feel like you have any resistance or you know heart work is just not your it's just not your jam or your squeeze those affirmations are gonna help like um that repetitive um act of doing affirmations centered around the heart is gonna help like uh rewire your subconscious programming and then after a while it'll be easier and easier and more natural for you to accept um whatever comes up in your heart chakra journey um so yeah that resistance isn't necessarily a sign that like oh that's not for you it's just maybe a sign of like hey this is an area that we could work on dissolving our like fixed beliefs about the heart and this is a way that we can like start to reprogram you know we have okay let me make sure I'm saying this right. Svadhisthana, the sacral chakra medicine, creation, fertility, joy, and sensuality, feminine power. So that definitely feels very related to pile one. If you want to watch both of them, you're definitely more than welcome to. And I'm also noticing all the fire and the candles in the background. So you could... Um, specifically work on using your passions and realizing that the things that you're passionate about are a form of love and are related to your heart and um i'm feeling in this pile it's very much uh there's some sort of connection or connective wire that needs to be mended it's not like the main chakras but it's like a, a synapse or a gap or like the connection or the bridge that's the focus that needs some repairing we have patience let me read this. Um, allowing the universe to unveil a situation how and when it needs to. Stop rushing and continue what is best for you and all involved. Detach from the outcome. So yeah, definitely go into um, your psychic development without any attachments. Don't receive this message and then judge it and then quickly jump to, oh, is this for me? Is this not for me? Just kind of receive it, take it in. And then you can act on it later if you feel called to, but don't immediately judge the reading and be like, yes, this is exactly for me or no, it's not. Just like let it marinate, you know. Um, then we have plants, plant medicine, appreciation of the complex poetry, versatility and connection between all living things, integrating plants into one's home diet and studies. Um, I am not well versed in um, different plant associations and different energies. But I definitely think that there's something there and there might be certain plants that are heart opening. So like cacao is one um, main one that a lot of people work with and that I'm familiar with. But there could be certain plant allies that um, will help to physically prepare your body for the opening. That way, as you do the mental and emotional work, your body is also um, integrating that with the assistance of the plant allies. We have the sun. 
to me this is like um opening you'll feel new again you'll feel energized this is going to open up your portals to abundance this is just going to have you feeling um grander and more potent and powerful and it's also going to just refresh your perspective on life in general we have nine of swords and i love how in the background of the nine of swords this sun is about to rise but they can't really perceive or feel that because they're so focused on their worries i definitely think um mending the bridge is going to help you shift your perspective and instead of focusing on like being stuck you're going to start to um focus on your rising um energy and your connection to your higher self and higher um energies and spirits and things of that nature three of pentacles and ace of swords let me take a second Okay, these two feel like a separate message, but one thing that could be beneficial for you in your psychic journey is having people um, and friends to compare notes to. And that way, because like you all have a certain piece that helps another person, and that will also help you like uncover your key or your sword. Um, and so your journey is not only an individual journey, but it's also a part of a small collective group's journey. It could be siblings or like a friend group, but the number three is very important. So it could just be like you and to other people that you kind of like compare notes with or like a group chat or whatever the case is but yeah definitely um the spiritual journey in general is just more fun when you have friends along walking the journey and the path with you so this is just um kind of like ending advice to include people in on your journey um, people that you trust of course and feel comfortable with but that will um you will all just help sharpen each other's swords basically so those are your messages thank you for coming to this reading i hope you found something in this helpful and i will see you all in the next one bye